Well, it's been raining today, so I figured I'd rig up some ribbon fish uh, lures. And uh, I may try to catch some kingfish maybe this week. But uh, I get asked this question all the time about how I rig or make a leader for fishing ribbons. And so I figured I'd just show kind of what I do. Um, maybe this will help some other people out that are interested in making leaders or rigging a ribbon fish. Uh, it's kind of popular here in Texas to target kingfish, Spanish mackerel. Uh, sometimes ling will hit these, um, even tuna. So uh, I'll just show you what I do here. Um, I guess starting off, I always make a wire leader because they have teeth. You can see it there in the picture. It's pretty real looking. Um, I like to use uh, brown wire or sometimes sometimes it'll say coffee uh, color and won't say brown. But I have noticed that with silver wire, I don't get hits hardly at all. Um, I don't know if they can see it or and it looks weird to them. And the brown, maybe they just think it's seaweed or maybe they can't see it. I don't know. But this is AFW, 105-pound uh, test. You can use lighter or you can use mallon. I mean, there's a bunch of different wire you can use. Uh, but I would recommend sticking with the brown. Um... I use uh, swivels on the very, to tie to my main line. And for that, I'm using 130 pound Spros. Um, there you can see one. Um, I use regular J hooks. Uh, the J hooks that I use are typically a Mustad hook. Um, I guess I will try to point out one important thing about the hooks. And that is, here's a piece of that 105 pound wire. If you look at the hook, uh, the eye right here, typically your hooks are just gonna be uh, wire bent and closed. And some of them are soldered, some aren't. These aren't. And so what you wanna make sure is that when you put that wire in there, that it cannot pass basically but you know you don't want it to be able to fit and pass between that closure point of that of that eye okay you don't want it to be able to pass through there all right um because you don't want your rig coming undone so these are good you also want to use hooks strong enough that that won't open up right so just something to think about when you select some j hooks uh and then uh, I like to use uh, these pearl dusters. This one's a six and three quarter inch uh, pearl duster. Some of these have silver, which I really like a lot better than this pearl, honestly. But uh, you just trim the, I like to trim the skirt to kind of fit the lure. Um, this is a artificial ribbon fish more realistic to a size of a real one. I have these smaller ones here. I'm gonna try out because they have a real nice reflective silver uh, finish that seems more realistic looking for reflection. So I'm gonna give that a shot. Tools, I use these little micro needle nose pliers from Harbor Freight. I like them because they have a rounded uh, uh, jaws on them. And so that helps me to twist the wire and put uh, loops in it when I'm doing a haywire twist. And then I use this pick to come in here where I've got these haywire twists and work that around with the pliers and smooth it out or even it out to make it a, a fairly round loop. And then I use wire cutters these are just like your standard crimping pliers with the uh, wire cutters on the end so you can just use side cutters if you're not you know you don't need the crimping part for this and then uh so i guess i'll get into the actually what it looks like and that is this right here so i have an artificial ribbon fish these are a little small like i said this is about your natural size that you would buy if you were to buy some frozen at a bait stand here in south texas these are just a little smaller so making some smaller leaders for them 
even on the bigger ones, I will typically do a three hook setup like this. Um, starting at the front, uh, and there you can see just a standard haywire twist. I've got my little Spro swivel and uh, the 105 pound uh, brown or coffee colored wire leading down to the first hook. Um, this uh, pearl duster just simply slides over the leader. It's a slip fit. And all it does is just kind of camouflages that first hook and leader set up in the front to help it blend when it's uh, trolling. Um, when you start making your leaders, it's important and you'll see so when you before you go putting them in the water even like this one the way it's sitting right now you wouldn't want to put it in the water like that uh see how that loop is not on the leading edge of that hook so you would want to actually twist that there we go now see how that's real nice and straight and even like it's supposed it's pulling it's pulling the eye of that hook like it's supposed to. Okay, that's what you want. Those little details you got to pay attention to because when you put the bait in the water, you don't want this to look crazy. You don't have to use the pearl duster. I've caught tons of kingfish with just this right here. No pearl duster whatsoever. But the important thing that you do want is that this pulls straight and true. And this is how you're going to run the hook through the nose, even on a live one kind of right up through the the from the bottom jaw up through the top there's a little hard spot you want to get it fairly close to the end that'll help it pull a lot truer you don't really want to put it way back here in the head you want it up just through the mouth through the front even on a real one like i said this is artificial um sometimes i'll put little bends in the wire uh see if i can uh, show this one but it has a little bit of a bend to this wire to help it to help it lay straight with the hook because you that's important you see when I pull on the front here when I pull on the front everything really lines up and that bait's gonna pull nice and straight whether you're trolling or drifting and that's what you want so when you put these hooks through your bait whether it's artificial or live you want to you that's what you want it to look like you want it to be a nice true uh pull and straight you don't want anything crazy because they won't hit it so i'm going to add a little weight to the tail here just to kind of give an example and then pull on this and see how it lines up that's what you want that's going to give you a a real straight pretty bait in the water and they'll hit that like crazy they see it so bear that in mind i like to face my two hooks the same direction you can turn one the other way if you want. Um, what you want to do before you make this twist, let me do the back hook so that'll better illustrate it is, is, so let me, you know, let's say we're making this leader, right? And we just have this wire. Pretend this isn't here. So the wire is just there. And we go ahead and we put our first loop and we're ready to slide the hook on. What you want to do is slide that hook in that loop and lay it on a table or something and make sure it's facing the right way in that loop. If not, you need to flip the hook around, put the wire through the other side of the eye because you want. it's important to get all this straight and true. If it doesn't pull straight, it's gonna look weird to you and it's gonna look weird to the fish. And if you're trolling, sometimes that can cause the ribbons to wash off the hooks or get torn up. So you really wanna take your time and uh, make these leaders as straight as possible. And when you put the baits on the hooks, you don't want a lot of slack. You want to take your time, figure out where the hook needs to go and put it through the bait. On a live ribbon fish, you don't want to go through the spine. You want to go just above it or just below it. But the spine helps give it a little rigidity and helps it stay straight as well and together. So keep that in mind on a real ribbon. Um, and... Uh, like I said, you can use these pearl dusters if you want. You don't have to. I personally think they kind of help mask the front and give it a little more volume to make it look bigger. And all, and what you want is for this to just lay in the water and kind of lay on it. It's going to be on its side kind of. And that 
that reflection right there that you see, that's what's in the water that they're going to see and, and come investigate. And so me personally, I like to drift fish. I've caught bigger kingfish on a drift than I have trolling. Um, I have caught some nice kings trolling, uh, especially with uh, big baits. But typically drifting, I seem to do the best. And um, this is how I like to do the rig for a ribbon fish. This is very popular here in Texas. And uh, again, it's really easy to make. You don't have to do anything special. You can buy these by the dozen at most bait stands. They come frozen and get out there and catch you some kingfish. So I hope this helps uh, anyone that's interested in rigging these up and fishing for them. And uh, this has worked for me for years. And my dad first showed me how to do it. And then later on, someone turned me on to these little uh, pearl dusters. So it kind of evolved a little over the years, but this is it and um you know if you guys get out there and do some fishing i wish you luck and maybe you can try this uh setup and see how it works out for you